Hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Pond Professor here. I'm coming to you from Fona International, right in Geneva, Illinois, just down the street from our office. I got Chris, I got Damien, Damien, Austin, and Aiden. We're gonna be doing a concrete pump vault for this feature that we built many years ago. And right over here, our machine just pulled up. Everything's falling into place. At any given moment, this whole thing could just unleash. Oh, we got water, what was that? Oh no, our dam is gone. <laughs> All right, so here's our machine. I am a cat fan. They've never let us down. Good reach on that machine. We're gonna be doing trenching. The guys right now, they're cleaning out some of the trash and debris along the perimeters. There's a bunch of erosion that's been happening over here. So we're gonna take some of the silt and sediment, excavate out some of that material, reestablish the shoreline. You can see how shallow this is. So we have to make a deep trough going all the way out into the water to allow the water to come over here to our pump. I have it specked out currently for five days, but I think we can do it in three. We got a good team here. Excavation has begun. You can see Chris is coming in and he is digging a trough out here in the pond because this is a really shallow shelf kind of. So it's all for marginal aquatic plantings and things like that. We have to have enough water depth in this area to feed the pumping system. If the water's not deep enough, it'll starve the pump. There's gonna be a 15 inch pipe that comes out and then there'll be a grate on the end of it. And then that 15 inch pipe will connect all the way over into our pump vault. I would like to have two feet of water on top of the pipe minimum. So at the bottom of the pipe, three, three and a half. So all of that sediment is gonna be reused along the outside perimeter. Now the nice thing about this particular pond, the owners of Fona are big outdoorsmen, fishermen, and so they dug this, it's a very deep pond, so it has a great fishery, they've stocked it, they manage the fishery really, really well. So by having a waterfall circulation and everything on this pond, it gives them better water quality. You could also see the native plantings, like a buffer strip going around the perimeter, that helps with runoff. And runoff is one of the main issues for retention ponds where it causes problems. Now this is capturing water off of the parking lot, off of the roof and all of that, but we want to try to have areas to allow sedimentation to occur and to increase overall water quality. This is one of the strategies for that. We're gonna come in with new six inch pipe and that new pipe is gonna kind of come right through here. You can see we have a mark on the ground. So we're gonna have a new six inch pipe coming in from our pump. We're gonna pull up off that uh, large stone over there, make a way for that piping system to go into the upper area. And then we're gonna bring it back down and around to connect everything up. Yeah. Here's our old piping. We're gonna try to pull that back so we can make the trench. Go ahead, Chris. Excavation is moving along. So we have CA7, this is a three quarter clear stone. That's gonna give us a good bedding material. Let's go check on the guys over on this side. They uh, just finished cleaning out the trench. All right, Damien, what do you got going over here? We are starting our connections for the pump that's gonna be taking the water from the housing to the waterfalls. Nice. We've got a six inch pipe here. 45 degree coupler we're currently priming and we'll be gluing up in a minute here. Excellent, it's looking good. So our next step, now that we have everything leveled, we're at the proper elevation between the pond level and the bottom of our excavation, which is approximately five and a half feet from water level all the way down to our finish elevation. So that means we have to put in six inches of gravel. So the bottom of the concrete vault is set at five and a half feet below that water level. So we put in our heavy duty fabric. We have a little bit of a soft soil situation. What that will do is that's gonna create a barrier between the crushed rock and the soil down below. That's gonna get us a good bedding material. So we have our bags of gravel. Everything is laid in place. We're gonna strap that up, cut the bottom of it, put in four to six inches of gravel, level it off, and we are ready for the crane. Here 
here with our vault. Everything's prepared. Drop this thing in, start backfilling, making our connections to the lake, and then our finished piping system going to that waterfall. He's rigging up the manhole cover itself. That's the lid that goes on top. It comes in a separate piece, and it's because they have different thicknesses for different load rating. These openings right here, it's a foot off the bottom of the vault itself. That's gonna be a knockout for us for our intake pipe. All right, our concrete pump vault is installed. I feel a lot better. It's always nice to get this thing in the ground because of unstable soil conditions. We don't want stuff collapsing in. So once this is in place, now we're in a much safer place. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna come in with our backfill material. The stuff that we dug out, piled up on the side, that's gonna be brought in on three of the sides. We're gonna fill it up halfway first. So we'll start working our way systematically around the edge. This front section, we're gonna hold off on backfilling with soil. We wanna get that crushed stone all the way up to the bottom of that knockout. The knockout area, that's where our 15 inch intake is gonna be connected to. Then we're gonna have a small stub of pipe with our shutoff valve mounted on the outside edge. That's gonna allow us to stop all the water from the lake from going inside of the vault. This will allow for easy maintenance. So whenever you're working in a flooded situation like this, so this, this is a wet vault that's gonna have water in it all the time. To go in there to do work, to do maintenance, to clean out the pump, it's a pain in the butt because we cannot lower the water level in this lake. So what we do is we have a shutoff valve, drain it out, we could clean all that stuff, get sludge, whatever we need to on a yearly basis. So we have a little bit of a challenge here still. Once that little stub of pipe is in, then we have to make a connection into that trough that we dug yesterday. We dug a 42 inch deep trough. It's going out about 15 feet into the lake. That 42 inch depth is to the bottom of that 15 inch pipe. So that's gonna give us enough water on top of the pipe to make sure that we have adequate water going to the submersible pump to make sure that that uh, waterfall continues to run seamlessly. Backfilling process is coming along. We're knocking in holes for our intake down here on the bottom. And then we also have a notch over here for our six inch plumbing to go up to the waterfall. So we're gonna put a little stub of pipe in there with a valve and then we could mortar around everything, lock that in place. What we'll also have to do is I'm gonna set up a pump and we're gonna have to pump water from here into the vault to alleviate some of the pressure. Otherwise, if you just start tearing all this apart, it's gonna bring sediment and dirt and all types of junk inside of there and it makes a big mess. And I do know that from experience. Once we drop the pump in place, we will then come in and we'll place our large uh, top. So here's the uh, reinforced concrete cap. So that'll go on top. Then we have our steel rings and everything that are gonna go on top of that. And everything should be falling into place here. All right, so we're putting in our large valve. So this is a 15 inch diameter gate valve. We also have a riser for this little shutoff valve. So that's gonna kind of come up a little bit higher. That allows us to manipulate that water flow. On the inside right now, they're getting ready to cut a chunk of our pipe. That will be inserted inside of the vault hole over here. So Damien is crouching down next to that 15 inch valve. So you can see the scale of it. That is gonna allow a lot of water flow coming through. So for suction lines, I try to target right around two feet per second is kind of ideal, but that's kind of our target rate for a good flow rate from a suction standpoint. 15 inch intake pipe is taken care of. We put in some uh, mortar around the joint. So we have our valve mounted. We have our stub done that's mortared in place. Chris is bringing in cover right now, our six inch thick concrete cap. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in our manhole cover on top of that and we should be all set. So I'm here with the legendary Chris Yax. <laughs> and what do you tell us what you're doing here, Chris? Well, we have this cast iron little elbow. We are going to put this seal on here. We're going to bolt up here. And then we've got a transitional piece that is going to go on top here. And then we're going to be able to take our four inch plumbing and glue directly on top of the elbow. So this is a 10 horsepower Surumi solids handling pump. I always use the solids handling pumps in this type of application because remember this is connected to an actual retention pond. So we have a valve that's closed right now, but once we open that valve, all the contents from the lake are going to have access to this. So any type of debris, small fish, whatever happens to come in here, we need to be able to pass through this pump. So 
So our pump is in place, all the plumbing connections. We're gonna pull the ladder out. We are gonna fill this with water just to stabilize everything. Chris is repositioning the machine. We're gonna dig this section out right here slowly. I wanna clean as much as this as I can while we're working dry. We wanna protect that opening. We don't want stuff going in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another one of our, our construction mats and I'm gonna set it up in front of that. Then we'll be able to pull that out once everything's done. It'll keep all that debris from going inside of there. Oh, we got water, what was that? I think that's an old pipe. We're good. Yeah, I saw water like shooting out. I'm like, oh no, our dam is gone. Ah. That's gonna start bringing in a lot of water. Found our old, old pipe. This was going to the waterfall and we had an old wetland filter in here years ago. My biggest concern is that those pipes are going somewhere and they're staying underwater, which means all the water is just gonna continue siphoning from the pond down into this lower elevation. All right, all that water is stabilized. We've pulled out our dam and now we're gonna bust through that last little bit. So he's already dug a bunch of it out. Now we're just gonna knock that section out right in between. Remember when we first started the project, he dug a deep trench way over there. So now we're basically gonna come through and open all that stuff up. All right, there's our 15 inch suction line is going in place. This connection is gonna have to be made underwater. They're gonna slide it out and then they're gonna make an underwater connection over here. So it's gonna kind of be feeling around a little bit. It's a little bit deep, but it's the only way to do it. How you doing over there, Aiden? You are, you got water inside the waders at this point. Nice. All right, it's underwater. <laughs> <laughs> the pipe is in place. Now he's going through and he's tightening up the screws on the stainless steel clamps that are gonna put it on compression. Once that's all in place, we have a couple more bags of the crushed stone. We're gonna put a jacket of that all the way around it. What that will do is the bottom of the excavation is kind of up and down, up and down. We have a minimum depth of 42 inches on the bottom, but there are pockets that are well over four feet. Our pipe is basically bridging across the uneven bottom. Once we put that gravel in place, that'll fill in some of those voids and cavities then we can put the rest of the soil on top and it will prevent anything from pushing or pulling on that intake pipe. So that's one of the most important components of this installation. Dam has been reestablished. We're gonna come in with a little bit more soil, put this little culvert pipe here in front. This is just allowing access. So that's for opening and closing the valve to allow water to enter for the pump. That's for routine maintenance. So everything is completed. Down some erosion blanket. We also just seeded everything. So we have to finish this section here. We're dumping in water right here. And it literally is coming right around here to the intake. So it's gonna circulate this one area. Definitely help with overall dissolved oxygen. You can see we have a series of aerators out there in the middle in those deep zones, which are also helping. Overall water quality is really good here. They do a great job of managing the watershed. They have some buffer zones around the perimeter. They stock it regularly with fish. Project is complete, power is in place, waterfalls are operational, waiting for uh, the erosion blanket to take off, get some plant material in here. But overall, everything seems to be functioning well here. So check out that waterfall. There it is. So that, but that high horsepower pump is powering right now. And the main thing is we wanted to see it from their office space. So goal has been achieved. All right, I hope you enjoyed this project. A little bit unique. Working on natural ponds is a lot of fun. Stormwater systems. I love kind of some of those challenges coming in with cranes and big pumping systems and all that fun stuff. But this is what I do it for. I just love the look of it as well as I know the fishing and everything in this pond is doing phenomenal because of all the work that we've done here. All right, we'll see you on the next project. Thanks for following.